Hi everybody. Um, today I'm going to work with a um, reptile type print like the one you see here. This is a super easy texture to make. It works great for anything you want a reptile type leather on. I'll show you some tricks to make it a little more leathery looking and a little less live animal looking. Um, it works great on uh, a lot of different things that you want, dragon skins or animal print, or I'm sorry, reptile print skins, and uh, it's super easy to do. So let's get started. The first thing you're going to want to do is start a new project. I am going to use a 5x12x5x12 five by 12 by five by 12 background for this. You can use absolutely any background you want. It's very um, sizable. Then what we're going to do is fill in with whatever color you want these um, spaces between your scales to be. So I'm going to do green today, and we're just going to bucket fill. And then the next thing that we're going to do is I'm going to add a gradient to this. As you can see, it's kind of light, dark to light, just like um, a real reptile would be. If you don't want to deal with that shading in your um, final product, don't just skip the step and you'll be fine. And you'll just fill in with a solid color rather than using a gradient. But we're going to go ahead and use a gradient. So you need to select your gradient tool. And we're going to change our gradient colors. And this is going to be whatever color you want your scale colors to be. If you're going to use the gradient, um, dark at the top, light at the bottom. Let's see if we'll go with the dark green. Actually, that's probably too close to the background color we have, so let's change that. Uh, and we're going to go to a light green. Okay, that looks pretty good. So, okay. This is going to be normal, and you're going to do 100% opacity. And we're just going to drag your gradient tool like that. So it's a pretty good texture variation. And then what you're going to do is go to your channels tab. If you are missing your channels tab on your um, toolbar right here, you could just go to um, window and pick channels to get that. So we're going to go and add a new alpha channel. And make sure we are set to a white foreground and black background when we do this. Then we're going to go up here to filters and texture and select stained glass texture. And what we're going to do is change our cell size. I like about an 8 and a 3 or a 4 on your border thickness. If you go smaller than this, when we create the grid that we need to move onto our layer screen, it's not going to work really well when we use our magic wand tool. You need something thick enough for that magic wand tool to grab the entire web. and your default will probably be a light intensity like that. We're going to back that down to zero because we don't need a light change because we've used our gradient tool. So now that we have that, we are going to use our magic wand tool and select just the white areas, which is, um, you'll see everything blinking, and I'm sure this is not going to look really great on the recording, but that's where we are for the moment. Okay, and now that that is selected, what you're going to do is go up here to Edit, Cut, and come back to your Layers tab. Make sure you have Layer 1 selected, and you are going to either Control-V um, or just paste it, and there you have it. And then what we're going to do is highlight this once again, the wire grid. It automatically added a new layer for us, which is fine. You're going to click down here on layer 1 and just press your delete key. This is going to get rid of this grid shape um, and pull out our background color. So we're going to just go ahead and um, control D to deselect everything. And you can either hide or delete this layer. I'm just going to go ahead and delete it and get it out of our way. And there you have it. There is um, our reptile print 
with the grid in it. So now we're going to make this look really reptile-y and not just this flat texture that we have. To do that, we're going to go up here to Layer Styles. If you are using GIMP for this tutorial, your Layer Styles is a plugin you have to download. Um, and it's called Layer Effects. So if you're using GIMP, just go to your Help key and um, go down to... Um, I want to say it's plugins. There's two plugin options. It's the second one, the one towards the bottom of your menu. And select that, and that's going to bring you out to the GIMP website. You could do a search for layer effects plugins and go ahead and grab that. If you're using Windows, you're going to want to use that first layer effects plugin, and the directions to get that loaded into GIMP are there. So put me on pause if you're using GIMP, go get your layer effects plugins, and then come back to me and we'll finish this up. For the rest of you who already have the plugins or are using a different program, go to Layer Style, and you are going to start at Inner Glow. And we are going to make some adjustments here. I am going to change your Inner Glow to black. We're going to make these stand up a little bit and go to Normal. And then we're going to change our opacity down just a little bit. I like about 50% on mine. And then we're going to go up to Inner Shadow. And I'm going to make it white. And we're going to go down to Normal. And this is actually a very cool um, animal print. You can stop here if you'd like. You can play with this a little bit. The more you play with it, the different effects you're going to get. I'm going to bring my difference down to a 4 or a 5, um, and the size, I'm going to back down to like 7, so it's not so fuzzy looking. And I like to play with the contour a little bit, and just see what you like. I'm going to change mine to this nice curved contour, and hit OK. So you can see, we kind of are developing a really cool um, leopard, or Gosh, leopard print. No, not leopard print. Reptile print, silly. Uh, we're going to go back to all... Uh, we're going to back ah, go back to layer and layer style. And I'm going to use the bevel and emboss tool. This one kind of have some fun playing with. Yeah, it's going to really change the way you look. I'm going to back our depth down a little bit. And um, let's see. I'm going to move our size just a hair to like 10 and we're going to soften this up a little bit I like a 2 or a 4 somewhere in there and of course play with the angle you can change the direction or the grain by doing this um, and I like um, again just playing around seeing what you like best I'm going to use this kind of bumpy contour for this one if you select contours or textures, it adds even more, and you can play in here as well. You can back the range up or down, and just give it as much feel as you want. Um, again, don't be afraid to play. This really makes it unique for you and your design unique. Um, I did use the texture. You cannot. So that is kind of our snake print or leopard print. I really want this to be a leopard print. It's not. It's our kind of our, our reptile print, dragon print. Um, just like the folded fabric prints we did, you can crop it, warp it, bend it, trim it, cut it, whatever you need to do to make it work for you. You can make this bigger or smaller. Um, this one is a little shinier and a little flatter looking. That's simply done by changing the emboss tools and and those layer effects to get this um, if you wanted to make this a little shinier you can go to layer style and go to that inner glow and um, oh inner glow oh, change it to white and that's gonna give you a shinier snake print rather than that darker one um, you can make it dark and then the um, other parts of it light. So have a lot of fun with this. Um, it's, it's 
a great texture. Again, it looks great on shoes, purses, whatever. I hope you guys found this tutorial helpful. And again, if you ever need me, go ahead and send me an email, contact me. I'm always happy to answer questions.